Radio Network. We are continuing with your phone calls. Coming up, I want to read part of, most of, Larry Flint's open letter to the American people in the Huffington Post. Very, very interesting. Uh, some other news. Mexico decriminalizes small-scale drug possession. See, it was nice for the government to control the drug dealing until things got out of control. And so now they're being forced to uh, decriminalize because they know that will lessen the war that's going on. Also, artificial life is only months away, says biologist Craig Vintner, Times of London. CBS to run video ad in magazine this fall. That's the future. Your magazines are just going to be plastic filament that has a small chip in it that tr transmits through it like a TV screen the news articles. It's 20-year-old technology. It's now being phased in. Very exciting. Uh, we'll uh, cover some of that. Also, more on the flu, how the establishment's hyping that up. But right now, let's go back to the call. Cyrus in Pennsylvania. You're on the air, Cyrus. Alex, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Pleasure to talk to you. What's on your mind today? Hey, Alex, I'm calling uh, regarding an email I sent you earlier today. Uh, yesterday uh, morning, I attended a CDC-sponsored uh, uh, symposium regarding the swine flu. I don't know if you had a chance to look at that. I have been getting a lot of emails, and listeners have been sending me video of CDC federalization brainwashing meetings where they train everybody to go under Pentagon, Department of Defense, regular Army control, mass graves. Again, we got laughed at eight months ago. Now it's all over the news. The mass graves and incinerators are good. And then even if the feds don't launch this bio attack in the fall, they're setting the pretext for control. But, but tell us what you saw at this meeting. Well, at first, you'll be happy to know a lot of people were talking about Alex Jones, and there were a lot of really informed people about what were going on. There weren't too many people that were in the dark, at least to attend the meeting that I was at. Uh, the, the meeting it was billed as sort of an informational meeting for the public. But once we got there, it, almost immediately, it seemed to me it was sort of a public opinion survey, like, like a Nielsen sort of That's survey. That's a focus group. No, no, they're finding yeah, out exactly. of the... If the slaves are going to not notice when their kids, uh, you know, have convulsions and get Gillian's Bernays. Exactly mm -hmm. correct. It was a focus group down to the point where they gave us each uh, electronic buttons and asked us to ask, answer certain questions that they read to us, which I, I didn't participate in that end of it at all. But uh, By the, the way, we've confirmed what a caller gave us a tip on Friday. At Boston, Logan, and other airports, they're taking DNA samples, scrapings off people's hands, to get us ready for DNA databases that the feds already admit they want to make for all Americans. They're taking blood from all babies at birth, putting it in illegal databases. That's now mainstream news. Uh, but, but I just wanted to confirm before I forgot that they're using this flu thing just as a cover for total federal takeover. Go ahead. The, the, uh, I, when I got there, there was a woman who, who tried to uh, make a point regarding something that happened in Texas. Apparently, there's a school district down there that wants to have the swine. You talk about this quite regularly, by the way. A school district down there that wants to make mandatory the swine flu vaccine before the children can attend school this fall. And the narrator tried to shut her down, which I jumped in right at that point. And after I sort of spoke up the audience, it turned into a little bit of a town meeting, if you will. And so that nonsense stopped right from the get-go. But once, once that portion of the, of the meeting calmed down, one of the narrators came to me, I guess because I was a little bit vocal, and actually introduced me to both the CDC head, who was a PR person, not a scientist, but a PR person, as well as a woman from the state of Pennsylvania. Her title was Director of, uh, bear with me for a Director of the Office of Public Health for, for Preparedness of Pennsylvania. Her name was Sharon Fitzgerald. And I asked her directly whether uh, Pennsylvania was a signatory to the uh, Emergency Health Preparedness Act, which, as you know, was passed uh, some time ago by President Yeah, the Model Trump. States Emergency Powers Act, yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, she, she wouldn't answer me directly. She said she'd have to check with her, uh, with her legal department before she could answer. But I... I well, a lot, of states didn't, a lot of states didn't pass accompanying laws with the, to index into the federal, to nexus in, but they still had the bureaucracies that take federal money have implemented. And, and then the feds themselves, first the feds get us federalized, then they are under U.N. 
level six. The World Health Organization admittedly is running this. So we're under U.N. control, and the U.N. bragged back in April, this is a great for global governance. Well, one of the reasons I asked her about that, because I had seen uh, another meeting, I think through your, your website at InfoWars, uh, where a gentleman from the Department of the Navy who worked for the CDC had said that martial law or, uh, or uh, wouldn't be declared nationally, it would be sort of up to the states to implement, and it would be through that Emergency Health Powers Act, which is, which is what... Uh, but see, that's true, but it's not. Everything with these guys is a very slick language of lies to protect them liability. The states have signed agreements with the feds that when the federal emergency management liaison to the state preparedness a directorate, when they tell them to go to it, the state then goes aye aye and flips the switch. So it's all legalese games they're playing. But yes, that's what I've been predicting. They're going to have regional freakouts, regional control to go, oh, look, the Army was out helping. Oh, look, nothing happened. They already have the Army doing drills all over the country. We played those newscasts, played them last week. So again, it's all part of acclimating. You know, the troops are, yeah, we're on the street. Just for the flu or just to stop drunk drivers, it's all to get you comfortable. But then when you actually go to the Army drills, it's for gun confiscation. Well, there's just two other quick points that I wanted to tell you that I asked her about. One, and she was surprised at both of them. One, I asked her whether Pennsylvania had a plan to deputize uh, non-doctors to give the injections. And what was the definition, the legal definition of deputization? And she, her and I parried back and forth. She didn't really want to answer. And finally, what, what she said to me was, Pennsylvania will not deputize. Because I said, what are you going to de deputize them as? Police officers, sheriffs, officers of the court? Will they be able to detain me? Or yeah, for those me? that don't know, a bunch of states have deputized doctors and other people to forcibly inject. That's under the Model States Health Emergency Powers Act. That's all admitted. And I don't believe her. Every state that we've looked at is deputizing uh, emergency people. And uh, it's absolutely hellish, but go ahead. Well, I believe you, because she did not want to answer. And what it came down to after uh, five minutes of her and I going back and forth and Mike uh, having uh, pressed the issue further and further each, uh, at each retort, uh, she said Pennsylvania wouldn't use the verbiage of deputize. What Pennsylvania would do was, would be to immunize those people so that they couldn't be sued. And I let that drop at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah the, the, the word is give them immunity. Yes. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, uh, 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 give them immunity indemnifies the word. Indemnify. She was gonna, well, she, that, did she say indemnify? No, she said immunity. Well, she just didn't know how. Uh, yes, immunity so is the same thing as an indemnity. Listen, I got to jump. Great, great point. Videotape those meetings. Put them up on YouTube yourself. Look, you're going to get nothing but lies and gobbledygook from local PR people. They go to central meetings, they're told what to say, they go out and, 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 and then sell you a line of baloney. You can go directly to the executive orders, you can go directly to level six under the World Health Organization, you can go to, directly to the secret state of Texas document we released in April that was sent to us, was given to us by someone I know personally in city government, I'll just leave it at that, here in Austin. And it is total martial law, total forced inoculation, quarantines, lockdowns of cities. Now, I told people that in April because I had the eyewitness reports and the documents. It wasn't hard. It's like reading the TV guide. People couldn't believe it. Now you've seen Fox, CNN, ABC, CBS all saying martial law might be needed. The Army may lock down cities and forcibly inoculate you. They're going to give immunity to locals that forcibly inject you. And now you see governors oppose DOD emergency powers. The Hill newspaper. Governors oppose the DOD emergency powers. National Guard takes over school and swine flu vaccine riot drill. Congressman Obama could use pandemic to declare martial law. Congressman Brown. Uh, here's another one. Pentagon wants authority to post almost 400,000 military personnel within the United States. Okay, this is the type of news that we have. This We know they're built mass graves. We know they're ready. We don't know if they're going to do this in October, November, December. If we get enough word out that this is all hype, this flu is one of the weakest ever seen, and that this is all a cover story, as even Dick Armey's saying, they may back off.